What's going on, everybody? My name is Chris Williams, and welcome to the Overblood Community Facebook thingy, your one-stop shop for everything Game Informer, where we cover the magazine, the website, the YouTube page, and let's not forget my favorite people in the whole wide world, the Game Informer Facebook page, better known as the Overblood Community. Now, this is the first time you're seeing these videos and you're wondering how you can participate. Well, Every Monday at 7 p.m. Central Time, I post a topic of the week in the Overblood Facebook page. Links down below. You respond, we talk, it goes in the video that posts the following Friday at the same time. It's basically the coolest thing that's ever happened since this. Oh yeah. Now before we get into what the fine folks of Game Informer have been doing, let's talk about the Overbuddies and what they've been up to this past week. All right, now, I'm very sorry about what is about to happen. Shaila and Tobin. Shayla and Tobin. I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Started working on a Super Replay-inspired design for a t-shirt. And uh, while she has mentioned that the post is rough, you can already see that this thing right there, or right there, I don't know, wherever it's at, it's somewhere on screen, though. I made a thing happen. What the fuck? future <laughs> thing is uh you, you can tell it's gonna be awesome right uh can't wait to see the final product and in more overbuddy news don't forget about glitchcon it's a thing where overbuddies are migrating to minnesota hanging out with other overbuddies and then uh migrating back to their homes very shortly after what will they be doing at glitchcon um video games one would assume uh, links to buy tickets are, of course, down below. And lastly, disaster struck the Facebook group as Game Informer released a poll asking fans what they'd like to see become a future Super Replay. The way people have voted have caused friends to turn on friends, brothers to turn on brothers, and overbuddies to turn on overbuddies. Truly a sad moment in gaming history. Now, the options were Conker's Bad Fur Day, Secret of Mana, Legend of Oak Arena, Metroid Prime, and Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Now, because we live in a crazy world, Secret of Mana and Conker's Bad Fur Day are dominating. Uh, currently, Conker has 37.3% of the voting, while Secret of Mana has 33.5%. And if, you know, for some reason you're watching this video, you haven't voted on the poll, link down below to take you to GameInformer.com. And uh, just remember, God forbid you vote on the second best Zelda game of all time and, uh, you know, one of the greatest games that's ever been released. God forbid you waste your vote on that, right? So when you go vote, it's just a two-man race at this point. Sorry. Sorry, world. Ridiculous. Team Oak Arena. Hashtag Team Oak Arena. We're making a comeback. I don't know when this poll ends. We're making a comeback. You'll see. Forget you guys and hashtag Team Mana, hashtag Team Conquer. You guys are throwing away your votes. It's all about hashtag Team Ocarina. Oh, yeah. Ocar is it Ocarina? I'm sure someone's like, it's Ocarina. You say everything wrong. It's Ocarina because that's how I grew up saying it because I didn't know how to say things when I was a little kid. 11.9%. What's wrong with you people? Speaking of Game Informer, let's get into what keeps the lights on. Just what have these bad mama jammas been doing all week? Well, if you'll just be patient, I'll be more than happy to tell you. See, we've got a new magazine cover reveal this week. A little game called Rise of the Tomb Raider. Now, if you're one of the cool kids, you're subscribed digitally. And you're already reading the magazine. And if you're watching this, let's just assume you're one of the cool kids. Am I right? Oh yeah, I'm right. Now, we've also got the Game Informer show where the crew talks about dying light life is strange and the legend of zelda majora's mask 3d damn gi is uh, also delivered some big news with the replay series where they finally started season three. First episode of the new season gives a shadow of the colossus also at the end of the episode we get a new segment that i always enjoy it's not a new segment i don't know why i see that. i said that like every time i record this doesn't make any sense anyways I enjoy this. I like it a lot. It's called You're Doing It Wrong. Tim Terry's got to help navigate poor Andrew Reiner, who's blindfolded through an entire level of uh, Goldeneye, which is pretty damn hilarious. Also, don't forget to check out their super replay of Raw Danger. As of right now, they are up to episode 11. 
I have to imagine that they've got to be getting pretty damn close to finishing this. And when they do, I will most certainly be marathoning the entire thing to find out how it stacks up to uh, classic Super Replays. You know, just uh, just saying. Should be pretty great. I hear good things. I hear good things from that Super Replay. Just saying. Check it out. Link's down below. Now, as always, we cannot forget about the test chambers. And boy, do we have some test chambers for you today. We got Darkest Dungeon. The PC game, so who cares? I'm just I'm just kidding. PC guys, I love you guys. Thank you for watching. You guys, you warm my hearts. Now, uh, we've also got Salt and Sanctuary, which is either a sequel to that Angelina Jolie film or a 2D game that attempts to mix Dark Souls and Castlevania together. I'm not really sure which one it is. You'll have to click the link down below to find out. It's a, it's a surprise. Happy birthday, Overblood. Happy birthday is what my hands do when I say happy birthday. I don't know what's going on. We've also got a Gunman Clive 2. At one point, a cowboy rides a panda bear. PC games. What are you going to do? And last but almost certainly not least, we had the Life is Strange Test Chamber. Life is Strange, if you don't remember, is a game I mentioned last week where Kimberly Kimbo Slice Wallace reviewed uh, and she thought it was awesome. I thought it was awesome and I promise you'll think it's awesome as long as you're cool like us. Just, you know, just putting that out there. Just putting it out there. Links for everything down below. Now onto the final piece of this crazy puzzle that I call the Overblood Community Video Thingy. It's time for the topic of the week. Last week, a little game called Dying Light came out, and as far as I'm concerned, it showed up and surprised everyone on the internet. Days before its release, there was absolutely no buzz for that game, but with the help of online gamers streaming playthroughs of the game, the internet got to see just how great that game looked. And as this recording, uh, over 1.2 million people have played Dying Light. And with the surprise of Dying Light, it leads me to the topic of the week. What game exceeded your expectations more than any other? And very quickly, before I get to your answers, I just want to say once again, thank you all for watching. Uh, all of your responses, everything, you guys are amazing. Um, every week, I wait to post a topic and have everyone ignore it. And every week, you guys continue to... Uh, be awesome and continue these fun conversations with me. I, I really appreciate it. So thank you very much. Also, I just apparently, I say everyone's name wrong. And uh, even the names I think I know how to pronounce. I Like Sam Smith may show up next week in the response. And I will say his name wrong. I will say Sam Smith and you'll say, you'll be like, It's, it's not Sam Smith. It's, it's Sam Smith. And I just like, you know, but it's spelled like Sam Smith and I'm going to pronounce it like that. And that's, that's how you sound, Sam Smith, if you're out there. And, um, so I'm sorry. It's just, it's a thing now. Sorry. Now on to your answers. <laughs> First off, we had Katie Lakuta Matata said, uh, she said everything because she has low expectations. Uh, then she went on to list a game she hasn't even played. I just want to say thank you, Katie, for doing everything you possibly could to break the topic of the week. It really meant a lot to me. Thank you. <laughs> also, we had um, Michael Clotier. Michael Clotier. Uh, he said, Deadly Premonition. I warned you guys. Like I said, I warned you all. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, he, uh, he said he had no expectations going in for Deadly Premonition. Uh, the PS2 like graphics had him skeptical. But by the end of it, it ended up being one of his favorite 360 games. I agree. The game's awesome. Now, the next one is uh, from our good friend... Cage no Ikari. Cage no Ikari. Whatever. Uh, they said League of Legends. There you go. Uh, now, apparently, I say this name wrong every time. So let's let's give it a new take. Um, Simeon Simeon Moore. <laughs> Same Samian Moore. Samian Moore. More. How how else could you say you, like I must I'm not saying more wrong like that's how you spell more, so it's his first name. This first this dude's first name is it's Simeon. Damn it, it's S Y M M I O N. It's Simeon Simeon Simeon. <laughs> what is your name? How do you say it? Well, he's he, uh, he said uh, Persona Four. By the way, what a shock! Right, everything is Persona related for old Simeon Moore here. He uh. Next week's topic could be favorite sandwich, and he'd say persona sandwich. So, uh, also, you know, Andrew Lockhart does though. Uh, he does agree. 
not about the sandwich. I mean, maybe he does, but I don't know. But, uh, you know, Persona 4, definitely a game that exceeded expectations for him. Let's see, uh, we also had, uh, see, this name is so ridiculous that my spell check is like, what is this? What are these names? <laughs> jo <laughs> Joseph Simontano Zawargo. <laughs> <laughs> he said uh monaco he claims it's an awesome top-down stealth game sure thing uh let's see we had brad hurung he said <laughs> wolfenstein the new order claims the game had no right to be as good as it was uh, dustin dent there's a good see there's my friend dustin dent can't get that name wrong not even if i tried he said uh he surprised me with his answer by the way he said the first mass effect game he said when it came out he wasn't really following video game news and he didn't know what he was in for and it you know ended up becoming one of his favorite games of all time along with the rest of the mass effect trilogy next up we have alexis uh utero uh, i don't uh, hopefully i said that right uh said uh binding of isaac which is a really fun game go play it. it's on ps4 pc and other places i'm sure uh zach pennington said the original bioshock somehow you and dustin missed out on two of the biggest games of all time how does that happen? Are you not following the news? <laughs> Go to GameInformer.com. They'll tell you some stuff. You know, I'm just saying. Uh, let's see. Some lady named Kim Wallace. Um, apparently, she's an editor for Game Informer. I'm not familiar. Uh, decided to join the chat, which, uh, once again, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day and answering my dumb question. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, K-Star went on to say The Walking Dead. She said her reasoning was she couldn't have expected to have such an emotional investment in the game. And Kim and I both apparently have at least one thing in common because we said later on, or she said later on, rather, that the game had tears streaming down her face and I had a very similar experience. I literally cried. Off and on while playing episode 4 and 5. Not a pretty picture. I'm a grown man. Just picture me. I'm sitting in front of my TV. And, uh, no. Oh, God. It was that. It was that for like four hours straight. It was rough. <laughs> also, uh, Rob Markin said Ninja Blade. I've always wanted to play that. Haven't got a chance yet. Uh, Shua, Shua Caramel. <laughs> Said Borderlands 1 and 2. There's a story involved. It's a whole rigmarole. Don't worry about it. Morgan Land said Unholy Heights. A $4 indie game that had no business being as entertaining as it was. Uh, Chon San Kane. <laughs> you and Shua. You clearly met up somewhere and decided that you would uh, embarrass me in front of the thousands of people that watch this. Not cool, man. Uh, he and, uh, he said, he said Katamari for, he said Katamari forever. It's a fun game. Uh, let's see, uh, J Jacoby Brannigan. Take your Jacob somewhere else there, buddy. Jacoby Brannigan mentioned Dragon's Dogma. Before he fell in love with the series, he thought it would look like an open world Skyrim clone with an interesting idea that could turn out to be crap. Turned out though for him, it was awesome. Uh, he also wrote uh, two little pieces on two other games. Uh, if you're interested, as always, the link to what he said and to the entire conversation we had Monday is down below. And uh, Adam Wade, so that's another good name, Adam Wade. He said Kingdom Hearts, which I mentioned last week. I really want to play, and uh, hopefully it comes out to PS4 so I can give it a chance. Let's see, Jackson McCarthy Hogan. Hogan. <laughs> what am I, you turned me into the ultimate warrior there. Hook Hogan. Oh, God ridiculous jackson mccarthy huggin said uh rayman origins definitely agree i had no expectations going to that game because i really disliked the old school rayman games played that and thought it was incredible uh, let's see matt pilkington pil yeah pilkington no, that's an easy one yeah matt pilkington said the original lords of shadows i don't know what that is uh let's see jordan andrew lee leah why is there an a at the end of that name jordan andrew leia Leah said, uh, One Finger Death Punch, which is a crazy kung fu sort of inspired indie game. It's stupid crazy. Like, go check it out on Steam. Looks really cool. And uh, let's see, we had Carrie Osborne said Dark Souls. Uh, funny story about Dark Souls. Me and a buddy, we actually uh, we picked that up. It said multiplayer on the back. And we were like, yeah, we need a new multiplayer game. This will be fun. It uh, took he and I about like four or five days before we like mastered how to make multiplayer work. But by the time we did it, uh, I would say Dark Souls 1 
is one of my favorite co-op experiences of all time. And uh, I don't know that you're supposed to play the game like that, but we did. Just saying. And also, it's a great game. So just go go play it if you have. If you haven't played Dark Souls One, go play it. It's amazing. Now well, let's see. We got Kevin Fetters. He said Majin in the Forsaken Kingdom, which you know, as we wait on the uh, what that game from the people who made Ico, The Last Guardian. Yeah, as long as as we wait for The Last Guardian to come out. You know, maybe go play Majin in the you know Forsaken Kingdom. For, for, you hear that? For, 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 I've stuttered. It's embarrassing. I'm embarrassed. The thousands of people, you guys laugh at me. It hurts my feelings. Um, I'm sick, by the way. If you can't tell, I am dead today. So thank you for <laughs> if you're still watching this. Thank you. I'm like just drunk on second week in a row. I'm drunk, but this time I'm drunk on like cough syrup. It sucks. Is <laughs> the uh, Ben Clemen? Clemen? He's that near. Didn't know anything about it, and aside from uh, most of the gameplay, it's a pretty cool game. That's the weirdest thing I've ever heard. This game exceeded my expectations. I hated the gameplay, but it's a cool game. <laughs> Never heard that said, ever. Um, Phil Cervantes of Soul Calibur fame said Fallout 3. Thought it would be Oblivion with guns. But boy, was he wrong. Turned out to be one of his favorite games of all time. And the last mention in the topic of the week is Eric Helmel. Helmel. Yeah, okay. Hel Helmley. I don't know. Who said Devil May Cry 4 when I asked him why? He said, uh, I didn't expect much from it. Thanks for the, uh, thanks for the insight, buddy. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, as always, this was the Overblood Community Video Thingy. And uh, don't forget that the video... You know, obviously it goes up Friday. You'll see it later. As a dog just walked by, ignore it. Um, and uh, <laughs> you'll see it at 7 p.m. Right, like you're watching it now. So every Friday it comes out 7 p.m. on Friday. Every Monday, 7 p.m. Central Time. Topic of the week. Don't forget to look it up in the Facebook page. Links for everything that I've talked about. They're down below. I love you guys. Can you tell that this isn't scripted? I don't have anything written. I'm just rambling now because I'm drunk. It happens. I'm sorry. I love you guys as always. Thank you for watching. I appreciate everything you guys do for me. You have no clue how you just fill my day up with joy. Whatever. Later.